Are you searching for fulfillment? <laughs> Discover true happiness. Stay tuned to Shalom World. Now, when I say Italy, what is the first song that comes to mind? Does it sound something a little bit like this? When the moon hits your eye like a big piece of pie, that's amore. When the moon hits your eye like a big piece of pie, that's amore. Is that pizza pie or pizza pie? It's pizza pie. Yeah, it I could be so. both. Pizza. Yeah, whatever you want. Well, this week we are joined by Dom and Chiara from Emmanuel Worship, and we're not here to talk about pizza. We're here to talk about worship. Um, how are you guys going? Very well, thank you. Very good. How are you? I'm doing great. It's so good to have you here, and that was beautiful. That was just a, a taster of what is to come. You guys hungry? Yes. Yes. Yeah. What pizza do you want? We would definitely want a gluten-free... Pepperoni pizza. Lovely. Mm. And the gluten-free costs extra? Yes. It does, That's unfortunately. Two dollars. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Two dollars. They should get rid of that. Anyway. Um, pepperoni pizza coming up. One, two, three. Hey. How good's that? Oh, my gosh. Um, I've never had a gluten-free pizza before, but I'm sure it's going to be delicious. Oh, are you having gluten-free as well? So. Yeah, oh, good, good. <laughs> well, um, let's say grace and then we'll eat, hey? Yeah. Sounds good. And the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I'm in. Uh, Jesus, we just thank you so much for this opportunity to come together and talk about you. And uh, we just pray that we might worship you with our bodies and our hearts. And we pray that, um, yeah, we might just learn what it is to worship you in spirit and truth. And ask you to bless us food to our bodies and our bodies to your praise. Amen. 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 Holy, Son, Holy Spirit. Um, let's dig in. What juice did you pick? Yeah, what um, kind of juice? I apple? think this is apple juice. Is it's it? definitely got aroma of apple. Mmm. Mm. Yeah, it's apple. <laughs> What was your juice of choice as a kid? Um, I really liked orange juice with pulp. Okay. I still do. With pulp? Oh, I love pulp. Yeah, I'm like an extra pulp type oh, of guy. Oh, yeah, man. Um, no, no. Well, no, I think you got apple juice, Kiana. Got- <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what about your pizza of choice? Is this it? That that would be our, ch- that's our choice. Yeah, this is definitely my go-to. And you say our go-to because I whenever... our go-to. Mm, because, because, no, you, you go, it's better when you tell it. <laughs> Because whenever we are like singing or um, like worshipping somewhere and we're out on ministry, we always, well, you usually get pizza and we're the only two gluten-free people on the team and so we always share a gluten-free pepperoni. Mm. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes someone on our team will have a gluten-free piece by accident and they're like, oh, no, what's happened here? They've made it wrong. <laughs> no, no, that's Dom and just, Chiara's pizza. That's just it's our Dom gluten-free pizza. Don't... It's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to oh, yeah. be. Did you, I yes. haven't tried it yet. Um, Sorry, I forgot about it. I'm kind of impressed. Okay, favourite pizza is pepperoni. What's your favourite worship song? That's Ever. Good, All-time all classic. Time? Like, I'm talking old school hymns, I'm talking new school. I probably really like, I'm not sure what year it's from, but it's a Hillsong United song. It's, I really like the song With Everything. I'm pretty sure it's like, With everything, with everything, we will shout forth your glory. Something like that. Mm. I haven't actually listened to it in ages. So. Okay. Mm. I just took a huge bite of pizza, so yeah. No, I'll tell you my favorite, my <laughs> favorite song. You tell me your favorite song. I think, it, I think it's a newer one. It's Awake My Soul. Mm. And the reason is, at the start of the year, I remember just driving to work 
And I just felt overwhelmed by the year ahead. I was like, this year is just going to be too big for me. Mm. And, What's the bridge of that song? And when we move, oh, and when we pray, we pray, west to the wall, now stands, stands away. away. Yep. And every promise is amen. And I'm, oh, I'm, I'm trying to merge onto the highway and I'm like crying. I'm like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that's so it's something so, it's so true. Like, you know, whenever there is a wall, like, Every single time, I'm like, no, nah, I'd say I'm defeated. He always makes a way, and I'm like, cool, and he's going to yeah. do it again. So I was just, like, overwhelmed in that moment. Mm. Oh. I love that, like, with every promise, and, like, the way she sings it is just... Oh, come on. Kiara, what's your favourite worship song? Okay, so I don't have favourites. I have, like, all-time favourite and then, like, Ooh. new favourite because I like too many, so I have to I have to go Separate easy. Separate them. Yeah. So the, the all-time favourite is probably um, Scandal of Grace from the... Hill songs of Dirt and Grace album, which they recorded in Jerusalem. But my new favorite is Stephanie Gretzinger yep. and that song "More to Me." Have you heard I don't it? I think so. You'll cry to that because yeah, it's too real. <laughs> it's too real. It's so deep. It's like the lyrics are something like, um, "Like you mean more to me, like more than the others." Oh no, you know, it's just like this moment. I think I was I was in adoration the other day, and I, that song I played it. Before Pentecost, and like I was like, wow, this is so deep. Like, Man, what, is, what do you think it is about worship? Do you want some more pizza? Bar? I'd love some pizza, thank you. What do you think it is about worship that just like moves us so much? I think there's something about music as a thing that's just yeah. it captures so much. Well, I think that firstly is that you're you're entering into a like a sacred space, mm. I suppose, and you're um, choosing to worship God. I think that becomes powerful when you make a choice to worship him. And you're not trying to, like, I don't know, get anything out of him. You're just worshipping him because mm-hmm. he's because he's God. Um, have you always enjoyed worship? I think even before I decided to, like, be a Christian or really take my Catholic faith seriously, I played drums in Emmanuel worship. And I just, mm-hmm. just love the music. Yeah. Because, like, like, it's quite simple to play and it's fun to play. <laughs> and it kind of like, even through the, especially through like a worship time, you kind of go on like a bit of a journey. musical journey, like even like an emotional journey. And I, I enjoyed that even when I just didn't want it to, didn't want to acknowledge God. Yeah. I had a, at Ignite Conference, 2012, I had a pretty profound experience. I, I think I really encountered God's love in my life in a really healing way. Mm. And it wasn't even in worship, it was outside. <laughs> It was outside. I was with my small group leader and I asked him, like, man, what's, why is there a thousand people at a conference? There must be something going on. Mm. Um, and he explained to me about a personal relationship with Jesus. And I suppose I'd heard that all my life because I grew up in a Catholic home, but I've, like, it never, like, sunk in. And just for some reason in that moment, like, he prayed for me and I was just weeping. I was just felt physically lighter. It was crazy. Yeah. So much love, and then uh, after the straight after that, I uh, I re- like I responded to that in worship, that grace. I, I was worshiping God because I was amazed by Him. I suppose that's pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's so powerful. Yeah. Well, what about you, Kiara? Did you always enjoy worship? Are you of a similar Dom? Like you grew up in a similar community and yeah, we were out have... worship all the time. Yeah, me and Dom grew up in the same kind of community, and. Like, I think, like, worship was always, like, a big part of church, like, going to Mass, like, it was a big part, like, um, yeah, like, sometimes after communion, even just, like, having some time of worship for a while and that being, like, a really special moment. And I didn't always recognise why as, like, a kid because I was like, oh, like, this is cool. I guess, like, we're all just, like, singing and having a moment with God after communion, like, mad Um, (laughs) as a kid, like, cool. But I think as I got older, like... And as I've grown up and, like, journeyed with my faith, I kind of see that moment as really special because it's, like, really, like, you've just received God and now you're just kind of having this moment with him that you can't fully express with in words. words. Yeah. So you're just having this moment and you can't describe it, really, like, for each person, I don't think. Like, what prompted you guys to step up as worship leaders to go from just worshipping to leading people in worship? Her dad. <laughs> <laughs> When I got back from net, I had, because I was predominantly a drummer, 
Mm. I just played no drums over that year. I just just played acoustic guitar the whole year, and then I um. And you wrote a bunch of songs, didn't you? Yeah, I was writing yeah. uh, writing a lot of songs, and so then it was just kind of a natural transition to because I came back, still wanted to be a part of worship ministry, and Pat was like, "Ah, oh, here, here you go." So <laughs> just kind of trusted me with leading of some little things and. Yeah, so that's how it kind of began, really. You just kind of like fall into it, I suppose. I was just very lucky to have people that um, pushed you out, pushed me out, and, su- yeah. and supported me. Yeah, that was fantastic. Yeah, very grateful for that. Having people around you, I guess, and you've been doing that for me, which has been really cool. So thanks for that. You're welcome. It's yeah. been great. Um, yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. What about you, Kiara? Um, I think I would probably second what you said about having someone push you worshipfully not just sing as in like pray and like speak like um in between songs or in gaps like words of encouragement and stuff I think that was probably like more of a step in worship leading me because it wasn't just me singing the song and knowing the structure of what we do but like more um going leading on the journey. people yeah, like in leading worship with the song what's the what's the difference between just singing and worshiping them for me at least like I feel like before I kind of had this, you know, everyday praying and like where I had that kind of conversion of worship wasn't just singing, it was praying. Before that, it was just like sing the song, do the thing, get the structure right. And then after that, I feel like it was more like, well, this is a whole new world now because if this isn't just about singing, this is about praying. And then this is about me and God's relationship every single time that I sing, every single time that I worship. That means this is a hell of a lot more personal than I thought it was, yeah. and which means this is 10 times deeper than everyone knows it is, mm. even when they're just singing along. What are some um, powerful moments you've encountered whilst leading people in worship? Last year at Sid, uh, when we did Ignite Conference in Sydney and uh, it was the last day of worship, I think, our last, the last rally, and Liam had just preached, which was cool because he's the drummer. Yeah. Yeah. He preached and then oh. went back to the drums. That was <laughs> Um, he and was fired up. Hey? He was. Oh yeah. man, he was fired <laughs> up. And I was, I was the worship leader for that morning. And oh. then I felt quite prompted. I was putting it off for a while, prompted to encourage people to like make a decision for the Lord. And that's that's quite difficult because it, it had been a difficult conference. You know, it was yes. a first time in Sydney after a full conference in Brisbane. Like everyone was. Everyone wrecked. was tired. Oh man, yeah. yeah. I could just went to sleep listening to a click track that wasn't there. <laughs> I was waking up to a click track that yeah. wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, we did like a it's like an altar call kind of thing, I suppose. Or I just invited everyone if they wanted to make Jesus a bigger part of their life, or they wanted to choose Him one hundred percent, surrender to Him. Just close your eyes and on the count of three, put your hands up. And um, I think I didn't see one hand in the room down of like a thousand people. Everyone had some, most people had two hands up, I reckon. And I think, and I, I looked up for a bit and when I saw that I I just choked up and I just couldn't, I was going to try and lead something else, but I just, I couldn't. Um, and I think there would have been people in that, in that room who were like, you know, weren't feeling anything or, but they could, maybe they were, they were trying to genuinely wanting to live a life for the Lord regardless of what they had been encountering throughout the whole conference. Or maybe there were some people who would, maybe that was the first time that they really encountered the Holy Spirit or encountered the Lord. That was really special. Uh, that was very special. That was special, special. yeah. yeah. Because, and I think it was the, the transition. Like on the first night, there was nobody oh, yeah. we like hard, dancing like, or like so praising like or standing. Our, Everyone like was sitting down. People were like, come on. <laughs> and, then the, and then to see that the, the, on the last day, to see everybody up the front making yeah. that, that sort of commitment yes. was just radical. I think that's, you summed up what I was trying to say just then. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for that. That's <laughs> Do you want good. to sum it up yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I think you said it perfectly. Kate, you have a fa- uh, um, favorite worship moment? Favorite worship moment. When I was first ever singing at Ignite Conference 2017, I only had to lead one song and that was Your louder. Yeah. And so it wasn't even, it wasn't a worship song. It was a praise song. So I was mm. happy and upbeat. I was like literally afraid of people. Um, and I had this amazing woman, Renee Doyle, who is a mentor that I look up to. She... Um, she was about to like preach that morning 
And she said something, she was kind of practicing back there. She said, she was telling me this thing about how like the Holy, when, when you want the Holy Spirit with you, like it will be. And like she said, she was telling me a story about, she was so nervous about going out on a stage, but and she just said, Holy Spirit, like I cannot be the one to go on that stage because like I'm me, I'm a human and I will mess it up. But if you come and you have your way, then it'll be all right. And she said that she like stepped over the stage and like the second she kind of stepped over like that little tape line, she just kind of felt it, all the anxiety just like. <sighs> anyway, I was thinking about that and that prayer she said. And I just said that prayer like, Holy Spirit, like I actually, me, Kiara, can't do this. Like, so you need you. I'm so, I need you. Like you have to come and take over. And I actually don't really remember anything else of that whole song. I remember stepping out onto the stage and then it was just there was lights and there was people there. I know there were, but what I saw was just kind of black and it was just me and then there was God. And then that was us and our moment. And I wasn't singing to a bunch of people. I was just singing to God. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty powerful. And I came off and I was like, what just happened? I don't even remember what that, what just happened. And yeah, so I think that was pretty powerful for me and kind of, yeah, setting the stage of worship in being something between me and God and let it, and then when I worship, I'm letting everyone else in on that. People often ask, like, why do you need to worship God if he's all-powerful, almighty? And it's like, he doesn't need our worship. Like, he's not sitting up there going, I hope they worship me today. You know, it's like, it's actually good for us. Like, mm. when we worship him, we are, and I love that image of a little child being like, Dad, like, I need you. Please help me pick me up. It's like, when we yeah. worship, we're like, we're letting go. And it's like, well... I can't do this, so you can do it. And yeah. when we do that, everything changes, hey? I think that's one of those powerful images, I think, is the dad. Yeah. yeah. Picking up. That's, yeah. Uh, that comes to me frequently in worship. Yeah. Same. Very frequently. Same. It's, but it uh, is powerful. It's so powerful. I think that is, that's very beautiful. Yeah, it is kind of just like a gift uh, surrender mm -hmm. like to God every time you worship. It's like... You're giving to him, yeah. but you're actually fully receiving. Oh, so like, much <laughs> you're kind of just letting him. God don't, can't bless be you. outdone in generosity, yeah. eh? No, um, no. Why do you think it's so difficult for us sometimes to like maybe lift our hands and worship? Like, what is it inside of us? Fear, shame, yeah, guilt, regret, embarrassment, not feeling worthy. Someone next to you is not doing it. Yeah. Someone next to you is not doing it. I suppose. Uh, oh, sorry, I went internally. Sort of like <laughs> <laughs> not like, you know, I'm not. That's real. Me, no, that's yeah, real. Yeah, it's yeah. real. Yeah. I remember. I know, but maybe like other people aren't doing it. I don't want to look weird. Yeah. Yeah, um, there's like so many thoughts. Like, I remember when I was in grade eight and I, like the person next to me raised their hand. I was like, oh, it's safe now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I remember that too. I, had, I didn't grow up in a Christian family. So all of this hand raising stuff was just straight up weird mm. for me. I was going to this church at the time and I could just see, see that like they were worshiping. And I wanted to worship God because I had just found out that he was real, you know. I was like, I want to be able to do that, but I'm not sure if I'm ready. Mm. Um, like, what if Like, what if I look weird? What if, you know, mm. like, what if people think that I like this Jesus person? I was like, well. <laughs> so for me, lifting up my hands was acknowledgement of like, well, actually, I don't care if people think I like this Jesus guy yeah, because I, I do. do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I think that's what it was for me. It was like a, it was acknowledgement. As soon as I put my hands up, that's me saying, I don't care what people think anymore. Yeah. Wow. It is. I think for a lot of, like, young people, that's a real thing. Like, mm. So we're speaking about all sorts of different worship, worshipping the Lord and leading people to worship the Lord. Like, uh, what are some tips you could give our audience for those? Um, I think when responding to worship or when you're in worship, my tip would be um, to just be where you're at because worship is between you and God. It's personal and... Um, there's no point worrying about everyone else or worrying about what you should be doing or should not be doing. Just worry about where you are and give that to the Lord and give where you're at. You don't have to be anything. Just be you. Sweet. So um, I would say that uh, from a reasonably practical point of view, um, for getting better at worship leading or getting more proficient would be to make sure you practice at home, practice what you've got to play. Um, so when you are leading worship on a Sunday or Friday night, um, you can be very, very invested in what the congregation is doing and very invested in what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. So you're not so caught up in trying to play the right chords. You should already know that. 
before you get to worship. It's very practical, but very, very helpful when you're trying to lead worship. It is so good to worship the Lord. He is so good. And I encourage you over the next week to do some of this stuff we've spoken about, to worship God on your own, to lead others in worship. And we are going to do the same. He's worthy of our praise. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Thanks for joining us for another slice of pizza. We'll see you guys next week. We're going to enjoy this. Three, two, one. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Make sure you tune in next week for another slice of pizza. Da, 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 da. Please make sure that you guys tune in next week for another slice of pizza. And make sure you guys are following, liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting. So as many people as we can can come and share some pizza with us. Um, thank you for everything you do. Looking forward to seeing you next week. <laughs> can we um can we get an audio Kiara. check of when Kiara. Dom when <laughs> do the pizza crunch? Look at that. that. What, which one? The wide angle at the back there. Yeah. Yes, you Yep. Oh, Alright, let's do it again. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh good, this one will be a smashing it. Okay. Shalom World brings to you the Catholic faith in all its different dimensions. It can be a faith to inspire you in, in your own living of your Catholic life in society. Salam World offers you an opportunity of being rich and strengthened in your family life. We live in a culture that needs to have a Catholic presence. We live in a culture that needs to be evangelized by the presence of Catholic teaching and the inspiration to live according to our Catholic way of life. I recommend to you you're involved, to be involved in the work of Shalom World. May the Lord bless you and bless the work of Shalom World. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.